Uh, thank you very much for that um, lavish introduction. And thank you to the um, Bangladesh German Chamber of Commerce for organizing this very important discussion. Um, excellencies, honorable minister, esteemed guests, thank you all. Um, I think I was, uh, this uh, conversation has been styled the post-COVID-19 outlook, prospect or problem. And actually listening to all of the esteemed participants speak, I think what's very clear is that for us here in Bangladesh, it's clearly both. And what has happened is that COVID has, of course, hit Bangladesh as it has hit the entire world. And that is going to be a massive challenge which we have to face. I think one of the things which came through very clearly in um, Ms. Sahai's presentation was how Bangladesh has, in fact, and I think we can give credit here both to the Bangladeshi government and indeed to the Bangladeshi business sector, among other um, sectors here, was perhaps able to weather the storm of COVID perhaps better than many other countries. That said, given the fact that our principal export markets are in the United States and in Europe, that has been a big challenge. And I think that's been spoken to very um, effectively by people like Professor Mustafiza Rahman. I have to say that I was very pleased to hear uh, Dr. Rubana Huck's um, presentation because I think it's the most hopeful of the ones we have heard. And I would also like to give Dr. Huck credit and indeed the entire RMG sector credit for how they have actually dealt with the COVID crisis here in Bangladesh. Because when COVID hit Bangladesh um, early last year, one of the things which we were very concerned about was the impact it would have on the garment industry, which is of course the engine of growth here in Bangladesh. And the fear was that with so many people working in such close um, environments, that the garment industry itself would be a hotbed for the spread of the virus. As it happened, because the virus uh, was managed so well uh, by the RMG industry, we didn't really see anything like that happen. And in fact, there was a lot of discussion internally in Bangladesh, which the Bangladeshi uh, participants will remember in terms of when it was suitable to open up the factories again, because of course they had been closed initially uh, as part of a nationwide lockdown, which Bangladesh had gone into as had many other uh, countries around the world. And in fact, I think it was great leadership on the part of the um, BGMEA because they took a lot of criticism among civil society and indeed among the media for their decision to open up uh, the garment industry when they did uh, to reopen it. But it proved to be the correct decision because I think that had a tremendous impact in turning things around for Bangladesh economically. And also, they did it in such a way that uh, the negative fallout was minimized. I have not heard, and you know, it's my job as a person in the media to look into these things. We haven't really heard of any significant outbreaks of, you know, um, COVID in the garment industry or indeed in any industries in Bangladesh, which when you think about it is an incredible um, uh, achievement for us. So I think we can be very proud here in Bangladesh of how we've handled uh, the COVID crisis. Certainly we're not out of the woods, though um, uh, I think we're one of the countries as has been, um, as has been uh, expressed where growth is coming back and you know, it's turning around quicker um, than, than, than the global average. And as I said, the biggest challenge is our export markets, Germany being one of them. But I'm confident, I think, that, um, that if the experience of the last 12 months have shown us anything, it's that Bangladesh is, in fact, going to be able to uh, weather uh, this particular storm. We don't know uh, what the coming year has in store for us globally. But with the vaccine now having just reached our shores and it's starting to be um, distributed throughout the world, the hope is that we have 
gone beyond the um, problem aspect of this crisis, at least the worst part of the problem, and are now entering the light of a new day. Other issues which have been mentioned have been the um, election in the US of a more trade-oriented uh, administration and the impact that will have on the global trading regimen. So I think all of these things suggest to me that we can be very hopeful about 2021. Certainly, you know, it may take a while before we get back as a, world, as, as, as a planet to where we were prior to the pandemic. Uh, we're hoping by the end of 2021, I think December 2021, we'll be at December 2019 figures according to the presentation. And I think, you know, that is going to have to be good enough for us. And I think if you had told us last year that we'd be pulled out within another 12 months, people would have taken that um, deal. So I think that's where we are. I feel that Germany and Bangladesh can work very closely in harmony together. Germany is the and is a major export market for Bangladesh. People have, other met, have also mentioned FDI from Germany could be very helpful for Bangladesh. I, as a member of the media, one of the things perhaps the other panelists here are not that aware of, Deutsche Welle is, of course, um, very active in Bangladesh, and also they have a Bangla language channel, which is something we in the media in Bangladesh have um, always appreciated. So I think that really shows the... Um, the commitment of Germany to Germany-Bangladesh ties. And I think those of you who are in um, industry perhaps see this as well, or you may, may, maybe see this even more um, strongly, but it's something we in the media are also aware of. I think I know we're very short of time, so I'm gonna leave it there as far as my comments go. I'm very keen to hear the comments of the rest of the panelists. And again, thank you so much for arranging this very valuable discussion and also giving me